What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about whether or not loot boxes should be illegal in some of your favorite video games. Now the reason that I'm making this video is because of an article that I saw posted on GameSpot a couple of days ago that says, and I quote, I'm just going to read this, US Senator Josh Hawley announced he is introducing a bill that would potentially bar the sale of loot boxes in certain video games. If enacted, Hawley's bill called the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act would ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions in titles targeted at or popular among minors, likening the business model to addiction. Then it goes on to say in quotes, social media and video games prey on user addiction, siphoning our kids' attention from the real world and extracting profits from fostering compulsive habits, Senator Hawley said in a statement. No matter this business model's advantages to the tech industry, one thing is clear, there is no excuse for exploiting children through such practices. When a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize addiction. Game developers who knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. Now, this is really interesting and the headline talks specifically about loot boxes but as you can see the actual bill that would be that is being proposed would actually ban a lot of different pay to win microtransactions as well and I think a lot of people were celebrating this article and this bill on social media because of the title talking specifically about loot boxes and not just microtransactions but a lot of people were really really happy when they saw this because it's kind of a no-brainer most if not all people hate loot boxes right loot boxes basically take your favorite cosmetics or items in any game and lock it behind a roulette wheel and you have to spend money to spin the wheel and you may never get what you want and that's just essentially gambling and people don't like that if they're spending money on a game they want to know what they're going to get and you know a lot of people were saying how this is great they really like they like the idea they hate loot boxes and this can only be an improvement but i did see some arguments from people who were defending loot boxes and microtransactions specifically for a couple of different reasons and I thought that their arguments were actually pretty valid and it led me to thinking like would I actually want this bill passed would it be beneficial to me as a gamer and to the communities that I'm a part of to have loot boxes banned so I think the strongest argument in defense of loot boxes is that if it's a cosmetic only loot box then it's completely optional for the player therefore you don't have to spend your money on it if you don't want to why would you let the government regulate that when simply all you have to do is ignore it and by ignoring it yet keeping it legal and in the game it's providing an option to players who do want to spend money to give the game developers more money for their titles and that might sound like why would you do that why would you give a game developer even more money after you've spent maybe upwards of sixty dollars on the base game and the reason for that is actually pretty simple uh most games are sixty dollars or less and with triple a titles becoming more and more expensive to produce uh, we haven't seen an increase in base game price over the years. I mean, the last 20, 30 years, we've seen games release at $60 pretty much across the board. No exceptions. Of course, there are special editions, limited editions, and bundles and things like that to kind of boost the profits of the uh, of the you know the game developer to kind of offset the massive cost that they're incurring. For making such an expensive game I mean what would you rather have a $60 game with optional loot boxes that are cosmetic only or would you be forced maybe to pay $75 for that same game I mean what would you rather prefer right and on top of that a lot of games these days like Apex Legends are completely free and they are relying on the loot box model which is really really interesting because you know a lot of the money I would say a vast majority of the money that Apex Legends makes is from loot boxes Boxes specifically and I know that there are some characters and such that you can buy just straight with you know your game credits but most of the time people are spending money for loot boxes in games like Apex Legends and with that being said the game is actually completely free for all players nobody has to spend any money but because of the introduction of loot boxes the few people who do spend money pay for the game 
for everybody else which sounds like a win-win right like if you don't care about cosmetics or you don't maybe you don't have the money to buy them right like maybe you just don't have the money to keep buying new games every couple of months there's a new game you just you're tight on money so you don't have the money to drop every time there's a new game that comes out well with loot boxes you don't have to spend the money right you don't have to spend anything all you have to do is download the game to your hard drive and the game's completely free for you you might not get the cool dances or skins but you get to play it for free knowing that all the other players who are spending money are essentially paying for you to keep playing for free and you know that's not to be taken lightly that's a big deal right i mean people who can't afford to play games can now play games like apex legends which essentially is almost like a triple a title completely for free which is really really great and that's good for the consumer not only that but it's good for the game studios too because now they don't have to come up with a new way to make money and they can continue to produce the games that we know and love knowing that if they implement loot boxes they can at least see more than sixty dollars coming in per game uh and they don't have to resort to changing the price or doing something else some other way to kind of keep them afloat and keep the profits uh, at a reasonable level another argument for the loot boxes staying in games uh is that you know we just shouldn't let the government decide what we can and can't do uh we should instead be voting with our dollars and with our reviews instead of relying on the government to just completely ban it right because if we ban loot boxes then that's it we can never go back to that model again and who knows what's going to happen to our favorite games that already have loot boxes what are they going to do are they going to be forced to switch to a new model are they gonna have to shut down their servers like if we go back to some of the older call of duty games for example like advanced warfare is that game just going to be done or are they just leave the servers up like who knows a lot of these games might not be able to continue to afford the servers and things like the developing uh developing new patches and new content without loot boxes so why would we let the government go ahead and you know kind of regulate that when instead you could simply choose to not spend your money on it or if you really hate them then you can not even buy the game or leave bad reviews and that's you know i think that's a good point because as we saw earlier um it wasn't earlier this year i think it was last year when star wars battlefront 2 came out that was in 2017 actually ea got kim gets destroyed they got obliterated um with negative publicity for the game so you know that's another argument just saying hey why don't we just vote with our dollars if you don't like it don't buy it but as senator josh hawley said in the article and in his statement you know it does prey on the addictive behaviors um, that are associated with a lot of these games microtransactions loot boxes and things like that and i think that that's also a really really valid point because even though they're optional uh, a lot of times either kids have access to their parents car credit cards you know if you're talking about the itunes store a lot of times if you have an apple id you might actually need to have a form of payment on that account and i know a lot of times you don't sometimes you can choose to not have one at all but for some accounts i have seen where there's only the credit card and paypal option there is no option to remove it um so they might have to have their parents credit card on file and they might just spend money that you know the parents didn't expect to spend and of course now that responsibility does ultimately fall on the parents but it's still something that happens quite frequently and it does get to be difficult to monitor all of your children's behavior online uh, because kids are getting more and more i would say immersed in technology at a younger age and finally it is an addictive behavior i mean we are literally talking about gambling here with loot boxes you're actually just putting in money hoping for you know to hit the quote-unquote jackpot or in this case to get items that you actually like or want uh, and there's no guarantee of that you know games like call of duty can put an unlimited number of items that you don't care about into these loot boxes and you'll have an equally uh poor chance of getting what you want as you do all this other stuff that they've just stuffed in there to lower the odds of you hitting that thing that you want and by doing that it actually you know triggers your brain saying well if i just spend maybe 20 more dollars maybe i'll get it then and then next thing you know you spent 150 dollars on loot boxes and you know maybe that's money that you shouldn't have spent you know it's it's 
of course, you know, like I said, of course, this falls on the responsibility of the consumer and the behavior of the consumer. But when we're talking about kids, like if they're under 18, you know, they can't even legally sign any contracts or anything. Um, and, you know, and here we are just kind of letting them gamble on virtual things. And we saw this issue with the CSGO Lotto scandal. You know, there's obviously a line has to be drawn somewhere because this is so akin so similar to actual gambling and it could be for the best that it just gets completely banned uh and you know there is a reason why gambling is age restricted right like at the end of the day you are responsible for what you do with your life uh but the chemicals that go on in your brain when you when you gamble right it is actually addicting and it's not like you're consuming a substance that makes you chemically dependent uh but the the hormones that go through your brain the neurotransmitters and everything you actually become addicted to the feeling of gambling just the excitement and the thrill of the potential for you to actually win is so powerful your brain's chemistry is so much more powerful than we realize so much so that we've actually banned gambling for people under the age of i think it's 21 if not it's 18 i don't know if that's you know state dependent obviously it's country dependent but we the point is that we as a society have agreed that gambling is bad right like if you don't have control you could get addicted to gambling and it's probably best for our kids that we kind of you know never subject them to those types of behaviors because it's not good for brain development and also they don't have the life skills to know that you know the odds of hitting a jackpot are so low they might not be able to rationalize you know what does one in a thousand look like right like what does one in a thousand really look like a 10 year old kid might just think oh it's just a low chance it's just low right but when you get older and your brain develops and you have a better uh, idea of you know ratios and probabilities and how gambling actually works then you're making a much more educated decision and then it's really up to you if you want to gamble or not so we've come to the conclusion that gambling is bad for kids right and it should be banned from kids um, so if we're talking about loot boxes could this fall into that same category the answer is kind of unclear because you're winning virtual items and you still get to use the items whether or not you get the ones that you want and most of the times you know they can't be redeemed for actual cash so it's not like they're really gambling money you're just putting your money into a digital slot machine and getting out whatever you it is that you happen to get but the overlaps with gambling are clear and apparent uh and it definitely i can see the argument for it causing addictive behavior i think that's pretty clear and it's also very clear that we shouldn't be fostering addictive habits in our children so at the end of the day what are we to do about this issue should we ban it completely make it illegal for games to include but loot boxes and if we do that what are we gonna what is the alternative right because a lot of there's a lot of benefits to loot boxes being in games and being consumed by responsible adults at the end of the day i think it's a tough call uh, maybe one route is you know making loot boxes only available for m-rated games right but even then who's to say that a kid's not playing it and at that point then i guess it really does fall on the parent or guardian for the child uh you know they, they are responsible for that child if they're playing a game that is rated for an age bracket higher than them then you know what more should we do right like i think that would be a solid middle ground keeping loot boxes in games rated m only or you know if it's a game that is completely child friendly all through and through right but if they add loot boxes it immediately makes it m rated right regardless of the content of the game regardless of what it is it's m rated immediately if the game has loot boxes and i think that would be a really interesting thing right because that would kind of give the game developers an incentive to find an alternative way of making money off of that title because they don't want to have that m rating maybe they would rather it be a teen rating so that we more copies can get sold and at the same time it still gives them that, uh, that option to have loot boxes if they really want them if they really think that that's what's best for the game then they can add them in the game take that m rating and then parents would just have to know hey look this game is rated m you have to be 17 or older in order to play the game and one of the reasons is because that this game 
does have the option for loot box purchases that could cause maybe addictive behavior. That's a totally reasonable thing. I think for me, that would be the best next step. You know, I don't think maybe we should, we probably shouldn't just immediately ban all loot boxes forever. Let's take this first step, see how it goes. And if the problem doesn't get any better, then at that point we can kind of reevaluate and revisit the problem. Um, but that's just my two cents. I thought that this was a really interesting uh, piece of news, a really cool article um, on a topic that definitely affects me and a lot of you guys most likely. And I figured that if you didn't see this article, maybe opening up this discussion for you guys would be interesting. And if you want, chime in with your two cents in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys. I think this topic is... I don't think it's very black and white. I think it's kind of got a gray area. And as you could see by this video, I could kind of make an argument for both sides. So. You know, like I said, it's hard to say. I've stated my opinion and what I think should happen. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really does help me out. Subscribe if you're new around here. And if you want, you can turn on notifications, but you don't have to. It's totally cool. I get that notifications are annoying. It's also going to be an addictive behavior, right? Getting addiction to your smartphone, seeing those notifications, I can totally get why you wouldn't want any more of them. So I don't blame you if you don't turn them on. And finally, I'm gonna try and link to this article in the description below. So if you want, you can go ahead and read the full thing all on your own. And with that being said, guys, I will talk to you guys again soon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been OmniArc. Peace.